Okay, it's 11 o'clock, so let's make a start. Welcome to this webinar on AutoCAD Civil 3D. I'm going to be looking at the new curds in 2021. If we get time, which I think we will, we, 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 we'll have a look at some of the other stuff in the country kit too. So let's just check that you can all hear me first and foremost. Can you please raise your hand in the application, in the GoTo application, if you can hear me? see lots of hands raising if you don't know where the hand button is you can write in the questions or the chat area yo yai hey hey ho whatever brilliant right okay most of you have put your hands up so we'll crack straight on my name is ian robinson uh, i'm the infrastructure consultant for great tech i'm based here in the uk and i help customers get most out of their infrastructure design and bim related software so that means I do a lot of training and I do a little bit of support, but I also do workshops and webinars and consultancy and blogs and stuff like that, generally evangelizing the technology. Uh, my main focus is Civil 3D, also Map 3D with GIS being my background. InfoWorks, go and have a look at some of my InfoWorks videos if you want to know what that's all about. Uh, recap for Point Clouds and Navisworks for Federated Models and um, stuff like that. Uh, BIM 360 as well. Uh, I work for Grey Tech, and there are four pillars to what we do here. We create, simulate, fabricate, and manage. So we work with the Autodesk portfolio and our own power pack enhancements to aid the creation of construction and manufacturing deliverables. And we then combine this with the use of our simulation products to verify those deliverables. And this enables us to drive them into the fabrication process. And that's where we also manage them deliverables in the fabricate area. We also have CDE products, which uh, link to internal and external uh, platforms as well. Now, this webinar is very much in the create phase of uh, the project using Civil 3D. This is the last in the latest round of webinars. I'm just about to write the next four. Uh, so if anybody has anything they would uh, like to cover, uh, chuck it in the question box or send me an email and uh, I'll see if I can do it. Um, uh, if you've missed any of the ones and you want to view them, have a look at our on-demand area. Uh, and also for future events, keep an eye on the events page at greytech.co.uk. Uh, this is a clickable link if you want to download this presentation from the handout area of the GoTo software. Where have you gone? Here you go. Um, and here's, here's the link as well, uh, the clickable link for the on-demand page, so you can get to that as well. Uh, and while you're there, why not subscribe to our blogs as well? I must admit, I've been a bit lax on the blogs lately, mainly because I've been doing an awful lot of presentations, webinars, training, and consultancy. So, uh, But I will catch up with them and start blogging again soon. But there's some really useful ones uh, that I've done in the past. I say that, it sounds like I'm being big-headed, doesn't it? I think they're useful, otherwise I wouldn't have written them. But anyway. Uh, you be the judge of that. Um, let's have that quick poll again, slightly different uh, this time. Just get an idea. There's only three questions. Uh, just get an idea of where you're at in your um, uh, your journey, if you like. Um, and the first one is, how long have you been using Civil 3D? So if you can just check on one of them, um, saying I've not got Civil 3D, or I've got it but I've never used it yet, or not to one year, one to five, or over five years. Okay, uh, nearly everybody's voted. Okay, let me just close that poll, and I'll share that with you. So we're all Civil 3D users. Unsurprising, I think, where, given the subject matter that I'm talking about. Um, so that's good. Uh, let's go to the next question. Are you using the country kit? So tick yes, it's the only version of Civil 3D I use. Or click no, I don't need it. Or click what the hell's a country kit if you don't know what one is. Okay. We're ready to share that. I'll close the poll now and share it. So that's interesting. Uh, majority of you are using it. I'm really pleased to see that uh, everybody, nobody said, no, nah, I don't need it. Um, uh, but interesting that some of you don't know what the country kit is. And this is really, really important is the country kit. 
So Civil 3D is distributed worldwide in each country, adds their own content. Excuse me a minute. <clears throat> Still coughing. It's not a COVID cough. We're all right. And you can't catch it over the internet, so we're all right. Um, so every country adds their own relevant content. So here in the UK, we have uh, UK standards for road design, roundabout design, pipe networks. We also have styles that suit our discerning tastes. And, and of course, each country has their own requirements when it comes to how a drawing looks and what information you need to produce. So the styles and settings allow us to produce the data in the form that suits us. And for the UK and Ireland, we have the UK IE Country Kit. You need to install it. When you do install it, the only thing you'll ever open up Instead of Civil 3D metric, you would open up Civil 3D UKIE. It puts that icon on your desktop uh, or in Windows 10 um, uh, on your application menu where you can uh, just run the UKIE. And then all the settings will be done for you. You'll have all the UK standards and you'll have these tools that I'm going to show you today as well, which are, are vital to what we do. Okay, right, that's uh, rant over. Let's go and ask the final question. What would you consider yourself uh, uh, in terms of uh, how experienced you are in using Civil 3D? Would you say that you're an expert with Civil 3D? You're a bit of an intermediate user? You use it occasionally, maybe a novice user, or you've just not used it yet? And we're ready. Okay, let's close that and share it with you. So we've got um, a couple of uh, uh, experts in the room, which is brilliant to see, and also a majority of your intermediate users. And again, given the subject matter, I would expect that there'd be people who haven't used, uh, there wouldn't be anybody who's not used Civil 3D yet. Okay, let's crack on, let's hide that. And go to the next slide. So the agenda for today, um, in this webinar, I'm gonna overview curbs in the country kit. So I'll just give you a brief overview, a little bit of a history uh, lesson on what's in the country kit in terms of the curbs. Uh, then we'll have a, a look specifically at what's new in 2021 with the curbs. Um, we also have transition curbs now. So I'm gonna show you how they work and then we'll, uh, I'll just have a bit of a practice. We'll just open up the software and have a play and uh, uh, do some things like drop curbs and cycle lanes and stuff like that. Cool, okay. So here are the curbs in 2021, and there are a lot more than we've seen in the past. So first, that little potted history. Uh, I can't remember when they were introduced, very early in the life of Civil 3D. We have these curbs here, a half batter, a bull nose, and a splayed curb. Um, they've changed very little over that time. We've got uh, the adjustment to the insertion point at some point. Again, I can't remember exactly when, but essentially they, they stayed pretty much the same up to 2019 release. Then in 2020, we got this custom one, and this allowed you to configure all the sizes so you could make your own specific bespoke curves. The other thing we got was in 2020 was all the codes released. Anyone who knows SubAssembly Composer will know that you can make any of the codes available or hidden to the user. Uh, and we also got waterline offset as well. That was another uh, addition back in 2020. So now in 2021, we have some new ones, namely high impact and bus stop curbs. Uh, the best feature though is the transitions. Okay, uh, you can add up to two transitions per assembly. Um, and yes, it's still difficult to put, say, 20 drop curbs in. Um, uh, uh, that's something we at Grey Tech would like to add in the future. Um, it's in the plan. Uh, when it'll actually get done, I don't know. Uh, but we'll have a look at what it can do for you right now. It's, it's pretty good, I think. Um, it just simplifies what we've been doing for quite a long time. The expert users have probably already been doing it. Uh, and as we say in our trade, you know, you ask 10 AutoCAD experts, a question you'll get nine different answers back you know so sometimes there's no right and wrong uh, it's just some people prefer doing things one way and some prefer doing it the other way so you can set a first transition and you can tell it to use a different curb and then tell it where to use the different curb and then you can do another transition uh, to say put it back to the first curb type that's what that's all about so let's go down an example let's say if you have 
um, an HB2 curb and you want to put a drop curb in at say chainage 55, ending at chainage 59, it would look like this. You would start with your HB2 curb, setting this as you always have done. Then you would tell it to enable the first transition. Tell it what curb you would like next, let's say a bullnose curb and then tell it where you would like that bullnose curb to start, so at chainage 55. Then enable the second transition, back to an HB2, and then you tell it where you would like that to happen, let's say at chainage 59. And it would look like this, and that will give you the drop curve. Now, depending on the circumstances, you would often want to keep the back of the footpath at a constant level, uh, whereas here you can see it's just going to drop uh, the whole of the assembly beyond the curb. So we need to look at how to handle that as well. And again, there's 101 different ways to do it. I'll show you one way that I quite like um, uh, to use. So let's just have a go. Just escape out of that. So here we are, Civil 3D. Let me just get my computer set up correctly. Bear with. Okay, so... Um, these are the curbs, so I've just put them all in here. Okay, there's all the curbs, and everything is as it was before. There's your half batty, your bull nose, and your splay. And you just pick a curb, and in the properties, just like you could before, you'll see there you've got your um, uh, curb type HB1, HB2, HB3, bull nose, just the same, and then your splayed curbs. And then we had in 2020 the custom one, and then we've had the tree F um, and the uh, castle curbs added in 2021 sorry 2020 wasn't it i don't know if i said that 2020 was when we had the custom one in uh so they look like that so there's your high impact curbs and there's your bus stop curbs um i would have probably hidden that line if i'd have done this there's probably oh i know why he's done that he's left that in so that if you can have a if you want a surface on it it's going to allow that surface to go just vertically up there so that could be useful. So that's why he's left that in. There's your bus stop curbs, two types in there. There's your custom one. You can make it whatever shape you want. I've made it an odd shape there. Um, uh, and uh, these are your, your, your simple British curbs. One of the key things that we've done um, since 2020 is when we add these new curbs in, he leaves in the country kit the old curbs the ones that were written previously. And that's really important. And it, it, it changes them. If I just go to the tool palettes, you'll see that you've got your British multi curb. So that's all these ones on the left in there. Um, and then you've got these simple British curbs, which are these ones on the right. Um, he also leaves legacy ones in often as well. I don't know if he's done that. There we are. There's the legacy curbs. So that these have been left in so that if you were to upgrade a 2019 drawing, say, and open it in 2021 and save the drawing and do work in that, because these are still in the country kit, the old ones, they won't just disappear like they used to. You may have seen that in the past where you upgrade your software, you open up an old drawing, and you've got little red circles where you used to have your curbs or footpaths or whatever. And that's because they've removed the old ones from the country kit and put new ones in. So... We always leave these ones in, and this legacy area will be all your old stuff. So these have all been replaced with these new ones up here. So what do they look like on a corridor? So let's just go and have a look. So I've just put a load in here with transitions, and I'll just object view that for you. Oh, I still had a curb selected, didn't I? Object view that. There we go. Spin it around. Okay, so there's all your curb types. So there's your standard half batters. There's your bull nose over to a splayed curb. And then we've got our bus stop curbs. And we go on to our high impact curbs. Now, the transitions between these have always been the same. And we do it the same way. If I just show you on uh, this transition curb here. Basically, on the half batter, this line creates a feature line along here. Okay, and that's the top of curb feature line. And then on the bullnose one, it has a top of curb feature line here. So when you change from one to the other with corridor modeling, 
it just joins that line there, top of curve, to that line there, top of curve. Okay, you've got front of curve here, gets joined to front of curve here, and back of curve here, gets joined to back of curve there. And that shape is just derived from them differences. As long as they've got the same feature code, then they will just string them together and you'll get that. Which looks lovely, doesn't it? It's perfect for a um, uh, a, a down to a drop curve or something like that. Gets a little bit more complicated. Going to a splayed curve just as easy. But it gets a little bit more complicated when your curve shapes start changing. Okay. It will do exactly the same thing. So top of curve there, so top of curve there, front of curve there. Now, interestingly, this one here it does string along there, and you end up with this triangle here. So it's just the same. But obviously, how they actually look in the real world, maybe not quite like that. And then if you go to a high impact, then obviously there's there's a lot of issue going on there because the front of curves down, sorry, the top of curves are way down here. So you can get these new strings in here. Now, the way to overcome that, if you are worried about the visuals, which we often aren't in Civil 3D, it's about the engineering. But if you want it to look right, just put a surface on it and that will solve that. Or even better still, extract the solids and then you can string the solids together using the solid editing um, and that would work as well okay so you've got you, these little things that you've got to overcome not not a biggie okay so let's just have a look at the transition so in this corridor here i've put a bus stop curve in okay so i've put a transition in there now, if I was to view that in the object viewer, just on its own, what will happen? So I've gone from a half uh, a half battered curb up to my bus stop curb. So you end up with this kind of gap in here. Now, in terms of getting the data out, all I'm interested in is this point here and this point here. Similarly, this point here and this point here. And it will transition to that. Now, in terms of the visuals, you just put a surface on it. So let's have a look at that with a surface on it. If I go to my transition, no, uh, yeah, transition, there you go. So there's my, so this is the, the model, it's just a viewport in the model. And all I've done is I've put a surface on that. So you can see that that's nice and neat. Just bang a surface on, jobs are good and everybody's happy. Let me bus stop area, okay. Um, let's go back to the model. And let's build one. So I've left a section over here that I'm going to work with from Chainage 300. Um, and we're going to build a corridor on here. I'll set the target so it goes into this width here. I'm going to put a cycle lane in there. Um, and then over here, I'm going to put a drop curve in using these, these tools in here. So the assembly I've got is this one here, all already up and running. So let's just do that. Um, so I'll start a new corridor. You could obviously add it to the existing corridor, but I'll start a new corridor. We'll just call it Road 1 West section. I'll use alignment and profile. I'll use Road 1. I'll use VP1. And I'll use the assembly, which is the full carriageway with the cycle path. I'll not bother with target surfaces at this stage. I'll just set the targets so that the left-hand carriageway width targets the offset left to road one, and the right-hand carriageway width target offset right to road one. OK, and OK, and OK. I'm happy with that, so let's just have a look at it. Oh, look what I've done. I've left that at zero, haven't I? So it's actually going to build it from zero, which is why it's taking so long. That's not a problem. We can just either drag the grip or just go back in and re-edit it and set that from 300. So it'll be a bit quicker. There you go. Look at that. Much quicker. Okay, so I've just got myself a standard corridor. Like so, let's change it to realistic. All right, pretty straightforward stuff so far. Now, I'm going to put in this area here a drop curve. 
But what I want to do is I want the back of the footpath to maintain this level. So I need to get a target along this level here. And there's uh, lots of ways of doing it. You can change the code set style in here into with link shown. And then you can draw a polyline where you would like it to be. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to extract the back of footpath feature line so that I can use that as my target. So I've left it as it is, and we'll just do feature line from corridor, pick a region, uh, all, because there's only one region in here, and just extract, I'm going to collapse that. I want the back of footpath, so the footpath outside edge on the left-hand side, so I'll just tick that one. Okay, so that's the only one I want out of there. Uh, if I go into the settings, this is important, you must remove the dynamic link. Um, those of you that are expert users in AutoCAD Civil 3D, you will know that you can't circular reference things. So if I had a dynamic link to the corridor, that becomes a circular reference. Basically, the corridor will be targeting itself, and that can't happen. So I do need to remove that dynamic link. Hit OK, just hit Extract. So what have I got? I have a feature line here. Oh. Where's my feature line, guys? Oh, that's the curb, because I'm an idiot. Sorry, it's there. Uh, corridor feature line there. And my corridor there. So that's cool. Um, that's a nice, easy way of doing it. Now, the next thing I need is, um, if I'm going to put a transition curb in that's 900 millimeters, what I need is I need one of these assemblies at the start point of the transition and i also need one at the end of the transition uh, transition so i need to add in a section 900 millimeters further on from where i'm going to be now i'm going to i'm going to put it in at 365 so i'll start it here and i'll finish it at 370 so let's just add an assembly in there so if i'm going to start my transition at 365 so i'll go add a section okay so 365 is around there um, I want to add it 900 millimeters after that. So I'll just type 365.9. There it is. Oh, that was 365 there, wasn't it? Um, and then I'm going to finish it at seven uh, at 370. So I'll need to add one 900 millimeters after that. So 370.9. And finish that. Okay. So I'm going to have a, bull, a HB2 curb stopping at this point. I'll have a bullnose curb starting at that point and it'll transition between them. Then I'll get to here and that will also be a bullnose curb. And then when I get to this point here, I'm going to make that into a, back into an HB2. So nice and easy now. We would do that, by the way. The way I would do that in the old way is you through the section editor. So I'd just do section editor. I'd go in and tell it to when it's built it, there we go. I'd go in and do the parameter editor and I'd go and find 360, 360.9, uh, say bullnose, find 370, say bullnose, and then uh, back to HB2 and you can apply between chainage range and stuff like that. Again, expert users, you've probably used that quite a lot, uh, but now it's a lot easier. So for, for those of us that are not as familiar with it, okay, so it's the left-hand curb, here we are. So I'll pick it, and in the properties, I will say, so it's using a, an HB2, and I'll say, right, I'm going to enable the first transition, yes. I'll tell it to use the bullnose curb, BN2, at the first transition. I'll enable a second transition, yes, and tell it to go back to HB2 at that point. And then I just need to scroll down a little bit and tell it where we're going to start the first transition. So that was 350 and where we're going to start the second transition. So that was 370. Okay, so let's have a look at that. We just need to rebuild the corridor. So I'll go in here, there it is, road one west section rebuild. It won't look like anything's going to happen here. But if I look at it in the object viewer, there is my drop curb. Okay, and 
That looks way too long. Did I do the figures right, guys? Yeah, I must have done. Okay, so I've got a 90 millimeter here. And, uh, sorry, 900 millimeter there and a 900 millimeter there. Doesn't look right to me, though. Should be here, shouldn't it? 350, 370. Looked really long. You all, anybody mentioning anything? No, you're not. 350, 370. Okay, well, we'll go with it. Looked really long in there. Uh, okay, so the next thing is I need to tell the back of the footpath. Not to drop down here. I need to tell it to maintain the back of the footpath. Well, that's nice and easy because all I need to do here is. It does look really long, that. 350. Ah, oh, 350's there. Yeah, I've done it from here all the way up there, haven't I? What did I do wrong there? 365, that's why, guys. 365, not 350. Go back in. <laughs> I thought it looked long. 365. Rebuild. Getting ahead of himself. Because I started at 350, isn't it? That's better. <laughs> uh, there we go. So what I need is I need to get it to target the back of the footpath here. Well, remember, I extracted that feature line, corridor feature line from the corridor. So that should have, because I removed the dynamic link, that should be running across our area. And there it is. Okay. So that's that auto corridor feature line, which I just need to set as a target. So let's do that. So I'll go back in here, corridor properties, set targets. Now it's the footpath on the left. So we will look for the detailed footpath on the left. There it is. And we'll target, not an alignment, a feature line. So I'll go and select that auto corridor feature line. That's the width. Oh, it will always ask. When you extract it, it doesn't necessarily use a name. You can tell it to, but I didn't. So I'll just tell it to use a standard name, and it'll just call it feature line one. That's fine. Now, I've done that for the width, because obviously the length is uh, uh, now going to be different, because it's going to be on a slope. But I also need to do it for the elevation target. So detailed footpath on the left elevation. Feature line from drawing. Pick the feature line. Okay, 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 rebuild. View it in the object viewer. Okay, and there we are. If I change that to shaded, you'll see it a little bit easier. Okay, so there's that triangle you're gonna expect when you're maintaining the back of foot uh, height. And there's a nice easy drop curve, okay? So it's a lot easier than the, uh, than the other method. I say it's a lot easier. I think it's just a little bit more intuitive. In, in Using the method I used before with the parameter editor, it's exactly the same. Um, uh, but having it in the codes of the, uh, the properties of the curve, I think is a lot more intuitive, a little bit easier for you to, to handle, okay? Um... So let's have a look. Let's do some more stuff in there because we've got loads of time. Okay. Uh, obviously, I could convert that to whatever type I want. Uh, I'll just change this back to uh, UK Plan View. Let's have a look at a couple of other things that are in here as well. Let's add a lane marker. We've got this new feature here called a lane marker. Okay. And this allows us to add lanes in, and this also has transitions on it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a lane marker. I definitely clicked. Lane marker. 
to this point here. Uh, the red one. Okay, and there it is. So we've added uh, a lane marker in here. And we can set in the properties of the lane marker whether the slope direction is away from the crown, because of course with subassemblies you can tell it to take properties from other subassemblies, which is quite useful. Uh, I'll leave it at 365, and then we've got these transitions in here. I'll come back to them uh, in a minute. Okay, so what does that do? Let's rebuild the corridor. And there we are. Got a lane marker in there. Now, if I didn't want that to start here and I wanted it to start there, um, I would actually, ooh, well, there's lots of ways of doing that, isn't there? I, I can use the parameter editor, couldn't I? Uh, section editor. And then go into the parameter editor. Uh, go into 350. Where are we? 350. Oh, I'm in twos. I really should buy new glasses. 350. And I'm going to the parameter editor. So what I could do here is I could say, okay, on the right hand side, the lane marker, the lane code, I'm going to remove the code from there. Okay, so there's no code at this point here. And then I could say, apply that to a chainage range and tell it to start adding the code from, say, this point here. Where did you click? Oh, hang on, where am I starting? At 3.20, aren't I? I'm sure I started at 3.50 on this. Let's just cancel that. Do that again. Uncheck that. And we'll go back to the start point. Get that one. Started at 300, didn't I? I'm an idiot. Don't know where I got 350 from. Must have written it down somewhere. I don't know, before that. Next one. Beep, beep, beep. Right, okay. So uh, that one is where I will remove the code. So that's the code's gone there. Apply to a chainage range and tell it to finish at that point. There we are. This is a similar method to how I would uh, use use um, uh, drop curbs in, in earlier versions. So I'll close that down or rebuild the corridor, and you should see that line stop. And then we'll have a look at transitions on that line. Close. Come on, it's doing weird things. So if I rebuild that, that should disappear, that line from that point. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we can put them in as well. And we can have transitions in them as well. So let's say I wanted to go, um, let's say I wanted to stop it, pull it back in at 390. Um, so we can go into the lane marker here. So let's do that. Oh, someone's gone very wrong with my computer. There we go. Oh, I've lost my mouse. That's what's gone wrong. Oh, yeah. Have you all I've had that before? I've had that a couple of times where the mouse just disappears. See, my mouse is back. Are you back in here? No. All you can do, shut down. Um, I'll do a save as, and then reopen it. Luckily, we've got time. 
Alive. Save. And then reopen it. Oh, it's back. Just to save, did it. There we go. Right. So in the lane. So in that, I could say. Um, Uh, we could say where the end of the um, transition is and the uh, width and the start of the transition. So let's say at the start of the transition, so we'll say uh, 390. I've got all my numbers muddled up, haven't I? So at 390, I'm going to start transition. And the end of the transition, I'll go 400. And the end width of the transition will take it out to the uh, uh, end of the cycle lane, so 5.65. Like so. Okay. So we can transition that as well. So if I rebuild the corridor, you should see that line transition back out at the end. There it is. So we can add these lane marker transitions as well. You can have multiple lanes. You can also have them set so that they um, uh, will automatically, if you move the carriageway up and down, change the slope on it, or if it's super elevated, you can get it to follow the carriageway as well, which is quite useful. Okay, so that's quite useful. That's a, a, a nice little tool we've added in there. Let's just carry on and have a look at a couple of other things that are new on the sub-assemblies in 2021. So the next new thing, let's have a look at this one here. You can add step slopes now. So in previous versions, you could add a slope on the edge of the carriageway. So if I go to the properties of these two carriageways here, you'll see you've got the no step slope. Well, now you've got a smooth step slope or a step slope. They called it step slope before, but it looked like that. This smooth one is now called a smooth one. Uh, what we really wanted and what everybody was asking for was an actual step slope. So you can adjust the edges to step out, which is how you would build it in the real world. So if I set that a one-to-one, -one, and there we are. So that gives us a nice step slope. Oh, yes, while I'm in here, have you noticed that some of these are red? And some of these point codes are not red. They're kind of a gray color. Basically, a point code that's red has a code applied to it. A point code that's not red doesn't have a code applied to it. So essentially, the red ones are going to draw the feature lines and the gray ones are going to draw nothing. So it's a lot easier. Let's just show you that in action, actually. Um, if I rebuild this corridor, Okay, you'll see nothing happen because there's no codes on them bottom ones. Although I've stepped out the bottom of the carriageway, nothing has happened. So let's add some codes. Okay, so let's say I want to get, I want to have a feature line drawn where this is. And same on this side here. So I can see where the formation level extends to when I've got these slopes on there, these step outs. If I select both of them again, and go to the properties, you'll see we've got all these codes here. So again, they were released in 2020. Um, so 2021's followed with that, and you've got all this additional coding in here. And some of them have got some weird names, you know, SBCP1, CCP1, etc. So like with all standard subassemblies, you can now look at the help file for the UK ones. So in 2020 and before, you went onto the help file, nothing happened. Now he's released the help file um, in two ways. You also get a PDF of it, but you also get an actual help file. So if I right click and look at this and go to help, this will open up the help file, which is here. I know it's the old style help file, but the, the chum files, but I'm all right with that. It works nicely. So um, in here, it tells us all about the uh, corridor. You've got nice pictures. You can see what everything's doing, what components are in there, uh, this end cap control where you've got the shifting and the sloping and all that business. Transitions, how these work with transitions, because you can transition in there. I must admit, I usually use uh, targets in there. 
Here's your common point, shape, and link codes all listed there. Um, if it has this in it, no codes, it will ignore it. If it just is blank, it will actually draw a standard feature line, usually the basic feature line, which is usually a blue line. So always copy no codes without the little dash, you know, just, just the Chevron no codes uh, and place that in and it will ignore that line and won't draw it. So let's have a look at these point codes. There they are. Okay. So point codes, you can see on the left hand side is CCP4 and on the right hand side is CCP3. So which way has he drawn this? He's drawn this, so it's the right-hand side one I want to use. So I'm looking for a code called CCP3. And I've forgotten what I'm going to call it. I've already set that up, so let me just go and check what I called it. Um, general multi-surface code set styles, UK plan. Let's have a look point codes, I called it capping formation. There we are, I'll just copy that. So I'm gonna add capping formation codes into here. So we're looking for CCP3, there it is. And I'm gonna call it capping formation. So what will happen in here when I hit enter, that should turn red, which it does. So red ones are gonna have codes on them and therefore are gonna draw your feature lines the gray ones are going to be ignored. So I'll have a feature line here. Okay. So what will happen when I rebuild the corridor? We should end up with a line just outside of the uh, curve. And there it is. So there is my capping line there. Okay. So you can add in these additional codes and you can see them far more intuitively. I have to say, I think 2021 release of the UK Country Kit is the greatest one we've had so far. They are just getting better and better. There's a couple of things I don't agree with, but, you know, it doesn't mean I'm right. Um, but generally, I think they're superb, these. These are far, far better, um, all of these uh, these kits here. Now, for the 18% of you that said you don't have the Country Kit, that's the only software I open up in the UK, the one that says Civil 3D 2021 UK IE. Even if you've installed the British English version, so it says English UK, the metric one doesn't have any UK standards in it. This version here has all my DMRB standards. So when I do an alignment, for example, and I go to the design criteria, and I use the criteria file, I've got all my CD109 standards for super elevation in here, all based on UK. Without the country kit, you wouldn't have that. When I uh, go to create pipes, for example, let's have a look at pipes. So if I go to um, pipe network and parts list, I've got BT open reach, DMRB. I've got uh, sewers for adoption, version seven, version six, motorway comps, all UK stuff you will not have if you are working in the metric version. And of course, I've got all my styles and settings. So there's all my surface styles already set up for, for the UK. So to download it, very easy. Let me just open up a web page. I know 67% of you, you know how to do this. Um, but if you just do a search on the web for civil 3D uh, UK, country kit it will be top of your list i'm sure no it won't be cheap country kit uh, there it is civil 3d country kits for united kingdom and ireland and all you do is you go and download that country kit there it's an msi file just double click the msi file when you've downloaded it and it will install it make sure civil's shut when you before you do that and it will install all them UK standards, all them assemblies that are based on UK standards, um, all them pipe networks, styles and standards and everything for you. Um, if you're running 2020, it's just the same. There's the MSI. There's a, an instructional video as well, which comes with. If I downloaded that, you'll get an instructional video, um, which Joe's written, which is bloody marvellous. 
So it explains what it is, and there's the link for the instructional videos on it as well. You can just click on one of them. And there's a video. If I click on the other one, There's the 2021 instructional video showing you what's been uh, added in there. Hopefully, you'll, you'll maintain this. So when you get 2022, you'll uh, you'll have that as well. But you must install them. If you're running 2019, you have to install it, but it's not an MSI. You've got to add it to the install. If you need help with that, get hold of support, and we will gladly help you with that. Okay? And I think, yeah, I think we'll do that. Keep it simple today, Ian. Go back in and see if anybody has any questions. I know some of you have been emailing me questions afterwards. I'm fine with that. That's okay. Some people don't like to ask questions in a public forum. That's absolutely fine. But if you have any and you want to ask them now, by all means, feel free to do so. No. I always take it as a compliment when the question, there's no questions. I must mean I've explained it impeccably. I keep telling myself that anyway. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, well, thank you uh, very much for attending. Um, as I mentioned, if you have any ideas of what you would like to see me cover uh, next month, please forward them to me or pop them in the questions, um, and I will endeavor to cover them. Uh, I have got a plan. Um, and the plan will be at the moment, although I've not finalized this, um, I'm going to plan to probably do an, an overview of the AEC collection. So a lot of you have the AEC collection, but you don't know what Recap does. You're not sure what um, uh, how to do certain things in, uh, the, uh, in Revit or stuff like that, or what does Map3D do. Uh, I was just going to overview the products. Then I was also, I've been asked to do an introduction to Civil 3D by another uh, user, just basically so that um, those of you that aren't experts or even, you know, uh, are just novice users or never seen, actually, I'll probably write it for people who have never seen Civil 3D but have it and want to understand it. I might do the same with Map 3D. Um, and the other thing I'm planning on doing, and I know some of you have asked me to release the video for the last workshop I did on coordinates. Um, I might take a section of that and run a webinar on it so that will be released because we don't release the videos of the webinars, although I was planning on sending those that had asked me the uh, one on Where Matters Coordinate Workshop. Um, I may just do them as um, webinars and release them that way because I think, I think some of that information was quite useful. Oh, hang on a minute. We have a request. Retaining walls in Civil 3D. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, I might just do that. Let me add it to the list right now. Retaining walls. Now, the thing about retaining walls is there's three types of retaining walls, well, essentially three types of retaining wall. There's little tiny structures for, um, you know, like separating gardens on two levels, um, uh, which we generally would um uh, use oh hang on we've got more questions why can't i see all the questions ah here we go um then there's the kind of intermediate structural ones that's what civil 3d is very good at then there's the major structural ones the big ones with the um uh that 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 you would probably want to do in inventor or revit um so we'll have a look at that uh sheet piles oh that's a good one emily yeah I'll have a look at that one. And uh, yeah, okay. Another one, how to, oh, how super elevation works and how to tie into existing roads. Ah, well, Gavin, I've already done a video on how to tie into existing roads where you've got a new road and you want to tie it into an existing road. That's already been done. If you go to the on demand page, so remember you can download this, um, this uh, handout and click on the on-demand page and have a look at Civil 3D. There's a video on there. Or, in fact, in our blogs. I did it in our blogs. No, go to our blog page, and you'll uh, do a search for me, and you'll see that there's a video in there on how to tie things in. 
okay? But super elevation, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I'm really, I think that is a very good idea. I will do super elevation. I'll add that to the list. Um, sheep pals with varying depths. Okay. I think, Emily, what you're looking for is subassembly composer. So I'd have to do that in subassembly composer, which is very doable um given the time just to write that so yeah okay uh, i'll put it on the list thank you ever so much for your for your suggestions there i think they're they're really useful um certainly i think retaining walls and super elevation straight away off the bat um sheet pals we are going to be looking at potentially super assembly composer so i'm not sure about that one um i'll see how i get on with that and tying into this we've already done right brilliant thank you ever so much for for joining me um Keep an eye out on the events page for the next ones that I will be running. Uh, it may be one of yours that you've suggested there. You never know. Um, uh, there's all our, our contact details for remote support and what have you. So greattech.co.uk forward slash support uh, if you need it. Uh, um, thanks very much. See you next time.